Recyclical battery materials is a battery metal recycler that touts its high metal recovery rate. Zarko Mazelgia is Chief Technology Officer and Director. Zarko, welcome to Kitco. Thank you for having me on. Zarko, what's Recyclico focused on? Well, really, we're focusing on what we like to call recycling and upcycling of lithium ion battery waste. And I think when it comes to the battery recycling market, I really break it up into two, two segments or two stages. You know, there's everybody thinks what happens to the end of life of their electric vehicle and those batteries. And obviously those need to go through some kind of collection, mechanical shredding and dismantling process. And, and generally, this it's, it's like a powder that's called black mass in the market is produced. And then there's the second stage where it's now the really re refinement of that material and actually extracting the materials into and making it into a usable product. Because black mass isn't usable in a new battery. You have to refine those materials back. And that's really where that second stage is where we're focusing in on and recycling and upcycling those materials into as high of a value as possible um, of, of the battery material so it can be integrated back into new lithium ion battery manufacturing. Now, there's a number of battery metal recyclers out there and that has been receiving a lot of funding, uh, Zarco, but um, it seems like uh, the secret sauce, or you should say the real focus that you have recycled go is uh, really the tech. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we are, we're, uh, we're in a good position right now as well. Um, financially and, and in the progress we're going with our demonstration plant. Um, but we started this technology in 2016. We've received patents in, in you know, multiple countries. Uh, we have different patent families as well. Uh, and we have publications in different peer-reviewed journals. Uh, really, the technology is, is novel. It's a novel method of recycling, and we've shown it with our efficiency as well. And an important part of that in making new technology is scaling appropriately. So going from our lab testing to pilot plant, and now finally our demonstration plant work. Um, and, and I think, you know, aside from that technology as well, we really stand out in our business model. And it's not just to make large battery manufacturing facilities, but it's to take that technology and actually have more of an integrated play with the EV manufacturers, battery manufacturers, and, and cathode manufacturers that are in the, in the, in the industry. Uh, why would the um, uh, why would the higher uh, recycling um, rates uh, matter, uh, Zarko? Well, that's so. There's the recycling efficiency, so being how much material you can extract, and then there's the upcycling portion that we like to call, and it's actually creating a higher value material. It's not just breaking down the materials, because at the end of the day, if we want a fully closed loop ecosystem of of uh, or the supply chain of materials, uh, you know, this material would traditionally go through a process where the materials are broken down like nickel, cobalt, manganese, and lithium, and then they're recombined into those precursor cathode active materials and cathode active materials. And our questioning really was, well, if we're going to go back into that material, um, you know, can we achieve that directly th with our processing? So it's that combined recycling and upcycling. And it just, it, you know, it's intuitive to see that Obviously, the economic efficiency, there's you know, less environmental impact, um, and, and as well that that product is, is, is a higher value for the company to, to have. Now, can you expand on that, uh, Zarko? Because um, I, I believe you mentioned that in another interview, and it was uh, talking about uh, there was uh, traditional processes, and that might have to date back to the way that lithium-ion batteries were made. But uh, what you can see is either limiting the amount of cycles or uh, maybe not as, uh, not as much as a breakdown uh, into the individual components, uh, just because you have a change in terms of the uh, types of uh, end products uh, that uh, you know, your customers may need. Yeah, well, when we, I see like the traditional recycling is really coming from uh, more of this nickel and cobalt. It's what's commonly using nickel and cobalt extraction. Um, and old battery chemistries used to be more just dominant lithium and cobalt, or it's called LCO. Um, and, and cobalt being very valuable, was, it, was a, it was a valuable one to go after and, and using these processing methods that almost you know, could, could pay off to, to extract all of that cobalt. But now we're getting into more of these modern next generation cathode chemistries. They use a lot higher composition of nickel or manganese, and it's, it's that mixture. And now when you use that same process, that's really 
focus on targeting nickel and cobalt, um, you're getting a lot of mixture of other metals as well that can kind of, kind of complicate that process. Um, and then on top of it all, I mean, it's called a lithium ion battery, but the lithium efficiencies are very low, especially because now in terms of commercially available processing techniques, they use a lot of high heat and then just that burns the lithium into a slag material that uh, becomes very difficult to, to extract into, into any kind of usable product. Uh, Zarko, uh, Recyclico is uh, building up uh, the um, uh, test plant right now, but uh, let's go down a few years. Uh, so you've got the technology proved out, uh, you're, uh, you're happy with it at scale. Uh, what would you um, what would you see Recyclico's um, business being? Uh, would it be uh, would you be uh, partnering with um, automakers uh, with uh, the technology? Yeah, and and those are the current conversations we're having. Right, we're the reason we do at these different scale uh, doing the process and testing the processes in different scales is because companies want to do their you know due diligence. They want to see that this material can go back into their future products as well. And, and then those things take time and then it's a lot of relationship building. But at the end of the day, it's we want to not offer the product we produce, but we want to offer the technology we've made. And then being able to, for instance, at a battery manufacturing facility, integrate or co-locate nearby our recycling process where they can take their waste materials, recover those materials back into a usable product and introduce it back all within that kind of same footprint or, or at least nearby, reducing transportation costs, reducing a lot of other costs involved, pollution as well, um, and being able to integrate that material back. So it's battery manufacturers. There's the future of EV manufacturers. Uh, you see them right now. Um, it's really uncommon before to see uh, uh, somebody who's you know making cars to be getting involved in mining but you're even seeing a lot of that. So you're seeing all these manufacturers try and go up and downstream and try and capture that whole supply chain. And that's why we think they're they're really going to be the gatekeepers of that material and really deciding on where is it going to go? Is it going to go to an independent recycler who is going to be processing that material um, for them and, and taking a, a fee and then trading that into the market? Or is it going to be themselves doing that and capturing those materials are already critical um, and you're seeing you know so much price volatility due to these uh, supply constraints um, a, a lot of bottlenecks within that supply chain so being able to control all of those aspects uh, is what we see long term and why we're going more of that technology play and, and being able to directly integrate I, i've heard this before but uh, recyclers are going to have to pay attention to the miners uh, uh, how so? What do, what do you mean by that? Oh, uh, just in terms of what they're going to be producing, how they're going to be supplying into uh, the EV supply chains, uh, and then also what uh, recyclers are going to be able to provide uh, to the, um, you know, to the end customers as well. Yeah, well, I, I guess the, I'm already kind of starting to see that divide in like lithium where, so, you know, you have this now terminology like green lithium for that recycled content. Um, so when it comes to Pricing commodities. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going in that direction where uh, there's a certain price for virgin raw material and that's mined and what's recycled, and if and if there is a premium difference. But you're seeing a lot of legislation going that way as well, where there's a certain percentage that's going to have to be recycled. So maybe we're both watching each other, and uh, I think you know both will be needed going forward because the demand is only increasing, and uh, you know we're still going to need more mining. Uh, but you know, recycling recycling is is going to be a percentage of that as well for sure. Zarko, you mentioned uh, earlier uh, that uh, you had the financing. Uh, maybe you could talk about that. Yeah, last year in uh, October, we did a good uh, twenty million dollar raise with institutional investors, and it's really put us in a great position because uh, we're really looking at you know uh, a bulk of that to to be strategically placed for our future commercial development. And uh, right now with our demonstration plant work, uh, you know, we have the capital allocated to complete that work on the demonstration plant. Uh, so, you know, we, we are in, in a good position given the market conditions as well. Uh, you know, we're uh, main, maintaining that balance. So ha happy with uh, where we are right now.
What was the impact of uh, the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act uh, upon the battery metal space? Well, you know, that, that's that been great for our industry because what we're seeing now more is what I'm really looking at is this focus on the domestic supply of materials. And there's a certain tier system in terms of, you know, what percentage of new EV batteries will need to be either mined, processed, or recycled within the U.S., or with the countries the U.S. has trade agreements with, so including Canada as well. Uh, so that's just great. It's it's bringing more of that industry, more battery manufacturers, more cathode manufacturers, and with that, that really plays into our business model, because we we integrate where that business is. So if there's a battery manufacturer there, we want to integrate our advanced technology along with those new battery manufacturing facilities or those new cathode manufacturing facilities. So it really plays plays a huge role for us um, and this, and especially having that demand for uh, recycled content um, it yeah it just really really plays well into into our strategy lastly what's the milestones over the next 12 months uh, you're building up a plant in the greater Vancouver area Zarco yeah the demonstration plant uh, I mean that's already underway we are testing right now uh, feedstock material which is battery production scrap uh, so we're testing, you know, kind of in a, in a staged approach right now in the demonstration plant. And, and that's, uh, that's, you know, happening as, as throughout this year, uh, throughout the summer as well. We've reported on a lot of great results so far, especially in our, in our leach stage. Um, originally, the demonstration plant was designed for 500 kilogram per day processing capacity. And we achieved 163% of that capacity. Uh, so a lot, you know, I think a lot more news, I'm confident a lot more news is going to start coming up as we move through the stages. Um, and at the same time, this is work, you know, that we're doing in collaboration with some potential strategic partners who are looking at those results, analyzing our results. Uh, materials are being sent out to different parties to to vet for themselves and, and test uh, the physical properties as well. Uh, so there's there's a lot a lot of that happening, and um, I think we'll be looking at securing our um, uh, you know first first few strategic partners uh, in the next twelve months is is my goal, um, and and start establishing that kind of commercial plant design uh, in in different locations. So that's um, that that's those are the kind of milestones we're looking to achieve. Zarko, thanks for speaking with Kiko. Thank you, Michael. He's Zarko Mazelshia. He is Chief Technology Officer and Director at Recyclico Battery Materials. My name is Michael McCray. You're watching Kiko Mining. <laughs>